Howdy, how's it going? We are back. I know it took me a little while to get this video done. I appreciate all of you sticking around, subscribing, all that good stuff. I really appreciate all the new subs and all the comments. It's been great interacting with you all. So here you go, a proper review. And I might even try to do a separate install video, but I don't think it's gonna need much install video because it's just that easy. I'm gonna go into it in details. But without further ado, let's talk about these. I finally have everything tested. I took a week to get this video out. I apologize, but I just wanted to do my due diligence and make sure I can give you a proper answer of if it works or if it doesn't work. I tested both solutions. You'll notice this is the one that a lot of people are recommending. This is the one that I previously recommended just in the Discord and a few other places. This does not do much. Um, a couple of issues. First of all, if you try to put it up like that on most of the ones that I've seen shipped, it will not fit. It actually is bent a little bit too far inwards and you have to kind of bend it outwards a little bit. And the problem with that is if you don't bend the outer corners by themselves and instead you bend it in the middle, you'll have just a little high spot here and you really won't get any type of um, thermal contact. So what I did is actually make sure it's completely flat. I bent the corners, yada, yada. Still with a thermal pad, I tried multiple different types of thermal pads. I've used some G-Lit Extreme, which is better, but it's not good. Um, the problem with this, I'll try to insert a clip. Oh, so our drive is getting hot. Oh, geez. frick, oh, frick. So it is getting extremely freaking hot. And now you can see that the temperature immediately hit 90 C when running a stress test. And I know some of you might say, hey, that's stress test. I'll never do a stress test, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'll get into that. So if you look at the stress test, it shows you, I guess, the peak temp or what it could get to. That's kind of an indicator of how well your cooling solution is. The problem with this is it got to 90 C immediately said, no, I don't, I don't really like that as a solution. This is not doing well for me. So I went on for some further testing and games, even downloading steam games with nothing else running, just downloading some steam games. It was hitting 70 plus C. It was just too hot for a drive. In my opinion, not doing much, but writing. So I started thinking to myself, what do I have around here that I could use as a bigger or thicker heatsink? Only thing I had around were these right here. And I was like, man, that's just, that's not gonna fit in there. It's for a full size NVMe, it's just, it's too big. So I went outside and I spent about an hour uh, cutting and grinding and sanding and all that good stuff. And I came up with the size right here, 25 by 25 by 10. You can buy one of these. I found out the hard way. You can buy one of these on Amazon for like eight bucks for like a two or four pack, okay? So this right here is gonna immediately just drop right in and I'm gonna show you why. This one pesky sir. All right. So as you can see here, it's still in here, still in the same exact spot. It's perfectly flush. And you're going to ask yourself, well, how does it stay in place? Ha, huh, I'm glad you asked. This does not have a way to mount to the drive. So you're reliant upon a thermal pad holding it in place. Over time, it will come loose. I tried a rubber band method, tried a few other methods over time rubber bands will end up popping and breaking and this might slide around in your device somewhere and might short circuit something. I just don't like that. It, it made me feel pretty nervous. So without trying to drop my screws out everywhere, I'm going to do it anyways. If you look at this back plate, I mean, I don't think I could have done it any more perfect as far as the sizing goes. You can see I grinded this down unnecessarily because I thought I was going to run into a clearance issue, but I only took down maybe like a tenth of a millimeter. I mean, just barely anything. And I did reference it with the original one that I showed you um, a few minutes ago. That one does fit. 
The only difference between that one and this one is I had to lop off one of these sides to get it down to that 25 by 25 size. Now here's where the interesting part comes in. This right here is almost a perfect 25 by 25 spot right in here. And that heat sink sits in this area perfectly flush if you align it just right. When you put it together and you start looking on the inside, you might can see how it goes in there. I'm not sure how well it's gonna translate to what you see on the internet, but you will have to take my word for it that it works perfect. Now, here's the interesting part. Not only did I drop the temperature significantly, I no longer thermally throttle, I've dropped about anywhere between 12 and 15 degrees Celsius off the drive temps on an average basis. Now that's with gaming, with downloading games, with just everything in general, even the idle temps are lower. So check this out. This right here actually presses up against this, not much, but just enough to keep it in place. And then this little notch right here and this little notch right here keeps it from shifting around. It's extremely interesting how well it holds in place. I've shook it. I've done everything I can to get this bad boy to move. While it's hot, it won't move. It will not budge. You can actually see, it's going to be hard to pick up on camera, but you can see these slits right here. So as this fan is pulling in air, and air is trying to move through these grates, it does seem to be possibly pulling some air through here. I don't know how much, but it's enough. It's enough for air to move through it just a little bit or either air to exhaust upwards out of it. I'm not sure which one it's doing or if not both, but I can tell you it made enough difference for me to completely change the path of my original video. The path of my original video was to tell you that this was going to be the solution. This is all you needed. It was going to work. The thing is, without and with a couple degrees difference, a couple degrees, you might get three, you might get two. I, I, I got no more than three in most instances. I don't think this is even worth your time and hassle. So I would highly recommend using this. Buy one of these bad boys right off of Amazon and drop it right in 25 by 25 by 10 and I, and I can assure you it'll fit I've, I've tested this over and over again and I'm gonna show you how it sits on here it's just a thermal pad one millimeter thermal pad it's a G lit extreme you can use the thermal pads that they come with it's no problem I would highly recommend getting a pack of G-Lit Extreme or some NAB, NAD, I don't remember the brand, but it's basically made in the same factory, if I'm not mistaken, as the G-Lit Extremes, and they're the same material, same everything, just different brand name. I think those are the better value. Um, I've got a friend of mine who's done extensive testing on thermal pads, if you want to see. Um, I might could drop it below to give you a better visual representation of all the different thermal pads out there and their thermal conductivity and how well they stand up to temps. So, if you like this mod, I know this wasn't as long as I would like for it to be, or it may end up being too long, I don't know. You let me know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future. I'm hoping to get some more mods done. If there's anything you have a question about, let me know. Um, for the next thing, I'm probably going to show these 3D printed covers, and I'm really tempted to get it Hall Effect um, joysticks for this, because a lot of people are saying that it really makes a difference. I like the joysticks. Um, I've had this thing for a month now. It's It's been absolutely fantastic. I have updated to the latest BIOS. I am running uh, 323 with all of these drivers and hot fixes and all that good stuff. My SD card still works from day one. I haven't had any issues with it. I was um, enjoying this from day one on launch. I seriously couldn't talk more good about it. It's just a great device. I think that it gets a lot of hate from a lot of people who aren't necessarily uh, Windows gamers. They they may be new to the whole Windows gaming atmosphere. They may be primarily a console gamer or a, a, a Steam Deck gamer where your variables are very confined. Um, in the PC world with Windows, you have so many variables. Software variables, settings variables in the game. You've got this, that, and the other. It's, it's absolutely um, mind-blowing how many Windows updates will bork things and 
the variation of just oh man so much stuff you got all the game launchers that run in the background from boot up if you don't know what you're doing and you don't disable all that stuff and then people try to install active wallpaper engine don't get me started on that that's a video topic for another day just stop doing that um, there's so many variables and there's a lot of people who are misguided or you'd be surprised how many people think they could just download every game and run it at high. It just blows my mind. So if you want a console, go buy a console. If you want a PC, you know, it, it comes with some caveats. And this is at the end of the day, a PC. It's a full fledged PC in a handheld form factor. It's just got an APU instead of a CPU and GPU. Your GPU is built into the CPU per se. It's a APU. It's basically all in one unit. These do come with some caveats and some drawbacks, but at the end of the day, as far as its power in the form factor, oh, it's you can't get any better than this. I think it's a fantastic design. I think Asus knocked it out of the park with the exception of a few things, but you know, at the end of the day, you can look past a lot of that if you're a patient person and you really are experienced with Windows gaming in general. A lot of that stuff is easily avoidable. Um, I did, you know, like I've said previously, upgrade to the two terabyte Western Digital SN 740. I bought it for 125 bucks at the time off AliExpress. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't wanna buy off AliExpress. It's risky, it's sketchy. It's not, you really just wanna make sure you vet the seller and make sure you know what you're buying before you buy it. I don't wanna get off topic, but I will say one last note. If you are looking to save on these, you can buy these from Newegg Marketplace for 150 ish You can buy them on eBay. You can buy them on various places. I think that some of the prices are a little inflated for a few reasons, but I won't get into that. Do your own research. Ask the people who have bought them, not just listen to the people who haven't bought them who are talking trash about it. You know, There's a lot of people in the groups who are just trash talking AliExpress every chance they can to make themselves feel better about paying $220 for essentially a $100 drive. That's really what a two terabyte Gen 4 drive should cost, about 200 bucks. You can buy a 2280 for well under two, uh, well under 100 bucks now actually. So, so these things have come down substantially in price. The price of drives is just astronomically low. The demand for them is low. A lot of people wonder, well, why are these so cheap? Well. During uh, the COOF, we had tons of laptop sales and increased demand. A lot of companies thought that was just going to keep on rolling. People were going to keep working from home, keep buying more laptops. So they started stamping out a ton of these and it just went crazy. So now there are stacks and stacks of them at these OEM manufacturers and they're starting to sell them off in bulk to smaller companies who sell them on places like AliExpress. They do come in OEM packaging. They're not used drives. They're not crypto mining drives and all these stupid conspiracies. They're just OEM drives that were ready to be placed in a machine that never got around to it. Um, I actually used to work at a PC store where we dealt with stuff like that and I was in charge of purchasing. And I know for a fact that OEM drive costs are much cheaper than the retail packaging. And the reason for that is when you buy something in retail packaging, it comes in a fancy nice box. This stuff costs money. It does cost money to make. So manufacturers oftentimes will cut better deals with manufacturers of computers or smaller businesses, big businesses. They'll cut deals and give you a better drive uh, or a better price on the drive. That way you can save some money and buy more in bulk and you can buy it directly through them instead of a third party or, you know, whatever. So it's it's beneficial for everyone. I think um, a lot of people get the wrong impression with OEM drives. Some people are saying that these don't come with a warranty, but I think it's just... Um, who you talk to and how you go about it. I have found that I don't think I'm going to need a warranty on this because in, in general, if you keep your temperatures low enough, you probably won't run into the risk of killing your drive early and needing to use that warranty. The number one kind of um, killer of drives is heat. You know, these memory chips right here have a limit. Now, they can get up to that limit and be fine, but it's just like a car engine. If you run your car engine up to the peak gauge temperature it's probably going to be okay but if you run it for long it's not going to be okay because all the other components around it can't take that heat so it's the same with drives you, you can get them up to the temperature limit one or two times it's fine but the standard normal operating temperature range needs to be much lower for prolonged memory temperatures 
if you want this drive buy it if you want to buy another drive buy it i think this is a good value at the end of the day i think this is an even better value at the end of the day uh some people are asking about these memory heat sinks right here that i have attached with a very very sticky thermal pad that didn't make a difference i just still left it there because it's just better to keep it cool than not so it's free real estate I digress again. I get off topic. I just love talking tech. If you like talking tech, hit me up on Discord. Drop in the Rog Ally Discord, the unofficial one. Ping me. Hit me up. If you got any questions, let me know. And um, I am going to be bringing some more videos this week. I'm thinking about doing some other in-depth one-month reviews and maybe some more in-game testing. But so many other people have better graphs and charts than I do, so I just kind of leave it to them and I dive into the things that other people aren't covering. I like to show you stuff that you might not see other places just to give you a more interesting take. So, oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs>